Now, a little bit of history. On the arena yesterday, we had anti-gay activist Peter LaBarbera on the show again. You may know that he became rather famous or infamous in Canada when he was invited to speak to the Weyburn pro-life group in Saskatchewan. Now, immediately it was known that this was happening, a group organized to try to prevent him from speaking. He was stopped at the border, interrogated for about three hours, but he was eventually let through to speak. I said then, and I, I say now, that I regard the man and his friend and comrade Bill Watcott as absurd, offensive, pointlessly provocative, wrong-headed, and damaging to the pro-life cause and to presenting the Christian gospel, both things I care very much about. But I also believe that unless they call for violence, and they do not, these men have a perfect right to speak freely. But they're not, of course, they're not. They've been arrested in the past, charged, harangued, annoyed, silenced. Now, yesterday, uh, these two, Watcott and Barber, they, they went to the university in Regina, and, and they, they handed out anti-gay leaflets that, yeah, I find to be stupid and, and rather grotesque. But that is not the point. It's not the point. It's not the point. There are offensive and provocative leaflets given out, statements made every day on campuses throughout the country, and nobody says a word. Now, this is a video of the arrest, and La Barbara is on the phone to me on this show as he's being arrested and cuffed. I want to make one thing clear. People have said, oh, they're being arrested for trespassing, not against free speech. Oh, be realistic here. Be realistic. Trespassing, it's because of what they're saying. That's why they're being arrested. It's quite a long clip, but it's worth seeing. Have a look. Hi there. Do you like to my books? Yeah. Can't do it. Okay. Okay. So, hey, man, he has the right to say what he No, I've won two court cases, and I do believe I have a charter right to speak here. I know you do. No. Okay, and I'll fight one court. I'm not going to have you. Wait, if you put handcuffs on me, I'll leave. But you're going to have to take me off the campus. Like, like, I believe that I have a charter right to be here, and I believe I have a moral responsibility to share the gospel with these students. And uh, I believe this university will not be as rich as what it could be if it, if it allowed me to stay here and speak. I respect you. I respect you. Uh, but, but I'm not going to follow that order if it's unjust and it's illegal. Okay. Next steps, okay? Okay. I'm always a peaceful guy. But students, students, this is wrong. Yeah, even, 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 even like those of you who like disagree with me, we are we are all less free because of this. Everybody loses. There, there, there's not any winners. Shame on uh, on this university for suppressing speech. By the way, can uh, you guys get my dinner? Thank you. Well, I'd like to stand in solidarity. No, it's actually shame on you. This is not democracy. Actually, I got the truth on my side. Just standing up well, I'd rather, I'd rather stay in, in solidarity with him. So, right now, you're under arrest for three seconds. Woo! Oh, and that's fair, that's fair. You don't have to laugh. Sorry? It is legal, but they have the right to have the point of view. They have the right to call their name. Dr. <laughs> now, as I said, this all took place, or at least some of it, while Peter LaBarbera was on the phone to me on the show. Here's a clip of what was going on during that arrest. I don't think his reputation is a wild and crazy guy. I think his reputation is, with all due respect, as a lunatic who doesn't speak for anybody. Uh, I don't. I don't agree. I don't agree. I mean, I, 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 you should read his book. It's an intelligent book. Oh, I can't and, wait. Um, yes, uh, we're we're being asked to leave right now. Uh, so, uh, Michael, I think we're going to have to cut it short. Okay. Yeah. W w why did you go there in the first place? If, if people say they don't uh, want I, you there, gotta, why do that? We're, uh, we're, it's being pressed right now, Michael. So thanks so much, and uh, we'll keep standing for freedom in Canada and the U.S. Bye bye. Hmm. Now, when the arrest took place, did you notice how? There are students clapping and cheering, whoa, as the two men are led away. Yeah, publicly funded students who are supposed to be dedicated to open and free debate, cheering like silly children and fools as two people with whom they disagree are arrested. 
Now, the two men who are arrested, they're not screaming, they're not being rude, certainly not being violent, not accosting people, merely giving out leaflets and making statements that are unfashionable, politically correct, and, and I believe profoundly inaccurate and wrong. <laughs> but I hear native zealots, left-wing protesters, anti-Israel fanatics, pro-abortion crazies make offensive statements all the time, and I will defend their right to do so. As do, by the way, the police and the authorities, which is why they are never stopped or arrested, you see. For example, now you've seen this one before, the crazy colored hair type swearing person. And in case you've forgotten, here's a reminder. Can you shut the f up for a second, too? Rape accusations discredit rape victims, which reinforces rape culture, which is part of patriarchy. The idea of certain people are inherently more valuable than other people because of superficial physical attributes is part of patriarchy. What the really idea that men should coddle and provide for women and or purchase their affections in romantic content no, is condescending and damaging and part of patriarchy. I'm reading face. The fact that women have long been shut out of dangerous industrial jobs by men, by the way, is part of patriarchy. The idea that women are too weak to fight or too delicate to function in the military setting is part of patriarchy. <laughs> Sorry. Now, thing is, oddly enough, she protested outside of the church we attend, my, my, my wife, myself, our family, an ordinary Toronto Catholic church. And she was swearing as usual, swearing and screaming. I mean, the language was filthy and abusive. I haven't, <laughs> nothing I haven't heard before, but there were children. There were kids there and families and people who were clearly upset at what she was shouting. There were five police officers standing a few feet away. So I went up to them, I approached them and I said, look, I think she's got a right to protest, but could you possibly ask her not to swear so much in front of these little children? Nope, they replied, nope, with a smirk. She can do what she wants to do. Quite so, quite so. Double standard, hypocrisy, intolerance. You bet. Oh, you absolutely bet. <laughs>